All right then, so we've set up our GraphQL server to work with MongoDB now. So we can query data and we can also add data. We can make these mutations. But I wanna show you one little nuance. Imagine we go to make a mutation and we want to add a new author and we're passing through a name. Now we're not passing through an age property right here, but GraphQL is still gonna do this for us. If I press play, then we're not gonna get any kind of error back. We're gonna get that name back because we requested it right here. And if I refresh the authors collection now, we will see a name of John. This is the fourth author. It doesn't have an age property, right? Now, ideally, I don't want to allow that kind of behavior. I don't want someone to add a new author and just skip out the age property or even skip out the name property. They could have easily just added in an age here instead and in fact, we'll do that. We'll just say age is 20, right? So we don't even know the name of the author. We'll return the age here. And it allows us to do that. We're going to get another author object right here who doesn't even have a name. We just know the age of this author. And this is useless information. We don't want this to happen. So how can we prevent these kind of queries being made where they don't pass through all the relevant information? Well, we're going to do that in a very simple way. The first thing we need to do is grab another object from this thing right here, right? So let's do a comma. And the thing we want to grab from this is called graph QL, and then it's non null, all right? So we're gonna use this right here to say a certain field is required. We're not gonna accept a null value for certain fields. Does that make sense? Cool. So when we're making the mutations down here, that's where we ideally really want to say that things should not be null. So if we go to add book, for example, right here, then what we can do is place in front of this GraphQL string a new, then we're gonna paste this GraphQL non-null property in and surround this in parentheses. So what we're saying here is that this name property on the arguments when we go to add a book needs to be a GraphQL string and it cannot be null, right? If they've not passed that through, then do not allow this mutation to take place. So we're gonna do the same thing for these two down here. So new GraphQL non null and wrap those. And again, down here, new GraphQL non null and surround the GraphQL ID. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing for the author up here. All right, so the name, new, GraphQL non null. So they have to pass through a name property when they use add author and also for the uh, the age. So new GraphQL non null and surround that as well. So that was simple. Let's give this a whirl. So on the front end now, if I just get rid of this stuff, then you can see when it tries to make this query, if I play it, we're gonna get this error message back and this gets a little squiggly line. So first of all, the error message says that the add author right here um, is required, this name field is required and it's of type string and it's not been provided. So it's not gonna go ahead with this uh, mutation. So we can test that if I change this to 40 and try to press play, if I then go to the authors, we're not gonna get that record added with an age of 40. You can see the last one is still this age of 20. So this is good. Now it's stopping us from doing this. And if we hover over here, we can see that error. It says field add author argument name of type string is required, but not provided. Sweet. So now we need to pass through the name property. So if we pass in now a name of, I don't know, David, then press play then now this is gonna work, right? Because we've passed through an age and a name. And if I refresh, we're gonna get that in our database over here, David 40. Now, if I take out the age, that's required as well. So again, we're gonna get that squiggly line and it's not gonna let me do this. So this is kind of like a way of validating which properties are sent, right? We're saying we need an age, we need a name. And if we want to add a book, then we need a name of the book. Right, we also need a genre of the book, which is gonna be, I don't know, um, fantasy, surprise, surprise. And we also need an author ID, right? And only when we add this author ID in, then this squiggly line right here is gonna get removed from add book, right? So 
There we go, that is GraphQL non-null, and that is how we can say to the front-end user, look, you have to send certain parameters. Right, so I think we're in a good position anyway on the back end in our GraphQL server. Everything seems to be working quite well. We might return to it later. But now what I want to do is move to the front end starting in the next tutorial and create a React application to interact with our GraphQL server instead of just always making queries from this thing right here in Graphical. All right, so I'll see you in the next tutorial.